Hey crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So this week, I've got another fun sewing project for you. But before we get there, I wanna thank you for stopping by my channel. And hey, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, make sure you click on the subscribe button down below and click on that bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. I try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. So let's hop on over to my sewing table and let's get going on this fun project of making fabric baskets. So let's get started on making these cute fabric boxes. So this is one that I already made and if you guys look at my blog post, you will see the pictures of me making this one but I thought it would be fun to put another one together and I'm actually gonna use this one as a um, holder for one of my plants. So what you start out with when you're working on this project is you are gonna start out with four pieces of fabric. Now I've already cut my fabric and I've got two of this color and I've got two of this color, okay? The measurements on the fabric are eight inches by seven inches. Now you can adjust the size according to how you want the basket, but this makes this cute little small size basket, okay? So you're gonna take, one is gonna be your outside fabric and one is gonna be your inside fabric. So like here, I've got this cute print as my outside and then I've got something different for the inside. You absolutely could do them the same. I just really like the contrast. So we're gonna start out with um, two of the lining and two of the main, and then we are going to cut four pieces of um, interfacing, okay? And you want the fusible interfacing, and if, I'm sure most of you have used interfacing before, but if you haven't, there's kind of the, the um, fusible, it's kind of a smooth side, and then there's that bumpy side. The bumpy side is what we're going to um, iron onto our fabric. Now, I did use my ruler and I did use my rotary blade to cut these. The more precise you are with your measurements, the better your basket is going to turn out. Okay, so that's really important. So the first thing we do when we're making our baskets, and I kind of like to do this as an assembly line, and I'm gonna go ahead, I've got my iron already heated here, and you guys can see I'm using my pressing pad and I'll put a link down below. I love this pressing pad. It's right next to my sewing machine. So I always have it handy when I need to do any type of pressing or ironing. So I'm just gonna give each of my pieces a good press. That way, we're, our next step is we're going to add that um, fusible um, interfacing in. And like I say, I like to do it kind of like as an assembly line. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my fabric wrong sides up, okay? So wrong side up because that's where I'm going to put the interfacing onto. Now I'm using a medium weight interface and that makes the bag um, definitely um, you know strong enough to stand up it's not you know if you didn't put interfacing in your fabric would not be standing up like this if you were to make a bigger bag um, I would definitely recommend a heavyweight um, interfacing but I'm just gonna go ahead and place my interfacings on now I am putting my interfacing remember how I said that's got that little dots right that's the part that's gonna fuse into my fabric I'm gonna lay those down right on my fabric. Now you absolutely could do one of these at a time, you guys. I just find that when I put up, set up this little production table, it really goes smooth. Now one thing I wanna caution you on, you don't wanna go around with your iron. Get that first press um, of your iron on the interfacing, because you don't want any of this fabric to be wrinkled at all. So I, I you know, maybe five five seconds, not five minutes, Lisa. I do it. Definitely check the manufacturer's um, recommendations. They come with all the interfacings um, that you buy. And so I just like to go really slow 
here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna give it a really good press. But I just find this way, if you move it back and forth, the iron, sometimes you'll get wrinkles in your fabric and you definitely don't want that. You want your outside of your basket to be nice and smooth. Make sure your iron is really hot. I'm not using any steam on my iron. I've got my iron at a cotton setting. And so I'm just going to do that last one. And then what I like to do is I'm gonna flip them all over. And then what I can do is I can give them a really nice, really nice press, okay? Now I can move it around and I can really feel that that is taking really well. Okay, and you guys, I want you to note Lisa made a mistake and this is, I'm just gonna leave it on camera as is. Um, I've got my fabric going the wrong way. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off. I hadn't put it on really tight yet, but I had one of my pieces of fabric facing the wrong direction. So we're gonna flip that back over and we are going to see if we can get this interfacing to re-adhere. Really important to pay attention. This yellow that I'm using, um, it's just so faint, the difference between the front and the back. But as I was sitting here pressing, I could definitely tell I did not have it right. So now I'm just gonna come over and turn it over. And you guys, I'm just gonna make sure, press it really good. You really wanna make sure that you have no wrinkles in your fabric. Just take your time. You can just pile these up. Just take your time and make sure that everything is like it's supposed to be. Okay, so we've got our fabrics done with our interfacing, okay? The next step we're going to do is we are going to measure for our box corners. Now, I want to caution you on something. I wanna show you something. This is my first basket I made, okay? And this is the second basket I made. See the difference in size of the baskets? This is because I did not pay attention to where I was putting my box corners, okay? So this guy just didn't quite turn out like I expected him to, and I realized I put the box corners on the seven inch side, not on the eight inch side. So really important, again, that you take your time and look at what you're doing. So let's turn our fabrics over, because we're gonna mark where we're going to put our corners okay and what I'm gonna do is I have a, a, a lot of different marking type pens I use this one is just a dressmaker pencil I've got the washable marker you can use chalk or we've got invisible pens so all of these work just great but you do want to get a good mark on what you're doing here so we are gonna put two inch um, um, marks or two inch um, corners on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my marking pen, okay, and I'm going to mark two inches in and two inches up, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing on this one, two inches, and I'm going to go two inches, okay? I want to go out a little bit further here. Okay, and what I could do is at this point in time, I can take my ruler and I can see where I've got both my marks, right? And then I can make a perfect square. Okay, so I've got my square made. And we're gonna repeat this step on each one. Now, I could, I, I did it with the tape measure on this one. If you guys wanna do it completely, with your ruler, you sure can. This is another way to do it. I've measured in two inches and two inches with my ruler, and I am going to make sure, oops, 
and make sure it's right on the fabric. Now, let's double check Lisa before we get any further and let's make sure this is on my eight inch side, which it is. This is my seven inch side of my fabric. We want to make sure that our box corners are on our eight inch side of our fabric, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I normally just mark one of them and then I can cut these guys together. So I'm just gonna lay these on top. And you definitely could use your rotary um, blade at this point in time, but I am just going to grab my scissors and I am going to cut those squares out. And make sure you don't go past that spot, okay? Now some people like to sew their seams first. I just really like to get these corners done and I feel that they just cut really nice. So different people have different methods of doing this. Make sure your fabrics are lined up really well. This is just what I have found to be the easiest and they make just nice um, crisp corners for your little baskets. So I'm excited. This one I'm actually going to put up on my shelf. I picked up a really cute plant, um, a fake plant, of course, um, at Ikea. So I'm anxious to put it together. Okay, now that we've got our corners all cut out, okay, what we're going to do is we are going to pin our fabric right sides together, okay? And I'm just going to use some of my wonder clips that I've got here, and I am just going to clip right along all of the edges here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop over to the sewing machine and we are gonna sew down the seams. We are gonna go down all three sides here. We're gonna go down each side and we're gonna go across the bottom. And we are going to start back stitch and then um, do a secure stitch at the end, which will be another back stitch at the end. And then I'll show you a trick on getting these seams pressed out that I learned. So I'm gonna pop over to the sewing machine. I'll meet you there and we'll get these sewn together. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a half inch um, seam on here. A little back stitch and just continue on. I've got my seams all sewn and what I like to do is go through and clip all of my threads. Um, I like to do it as I go and I'm actually going to bring in that little basket that I made originally and that is the basket I will now keep next to my sewing machine for all my little scraps. So it's just a good idea to get these threads out of there. It really helps when you're sewing your um, your future seams so nothing gets caught up in your bobbin. So rule of thumb is trim as you go, clip as you go. So we're gonna go ahead and get those done. Now I've still got my iron going you guys and I'm gonna show you a trick on how to get these seams really pressed nice. So these seams we wanna press out. So what I like to do is I've got my iron all ready to go and I am just going to bend back the seam and press it just like that, okay? I'm just pressing the one side right now. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this one and the same thing over here, okay? Then I'm gonna flip them over and I'm gonna press open the other side, okay? That way I know I'm getting a good press on it. They're kind of awkward to be able to get into because it is a smaller basket, smaller size. Okay, and I'll do the same on the other one. And then our next step we're gonna do, you guys, is we are going to box our corners, okay? We're gonna do each one separately. We're gonna do the 
the lining and we're going to do the main and then we're going to hook everything together. So the other idea of pressing that works too is you can open that back up and just press that way. You're just really trying to get that seam good and pressed. And I'll tell you guys, you don't want to skip pressing. Um, pressing just makes sewing so much better. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my Wonder Clips again. And what we're going to do is we're going to box our corners. Okay, so to box our corners, and this is why I like doing the squares ahead of time, is I'm going to take those squares and really what I'm going to do is I'm going to match up my bottom seam and my side seam. Okay, and I'm going to clip that with a Wonder Clip. I want to make sure I'm right on that seam and I'm going to do the same thing on this one okay and since we cut those lines exactly two inches by two inches my other seams match up just right okay so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the lining okay I'm going to open it up and I am going to match match my corners or my seams, excuse me, not my corners. Those are my corners. And then I am going to do it on the other side, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna do a half inch seam down here and a half inch seam down here. Same thing with this one, okay? So let's hop on over to the sewing machine. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that in and I'm gonna do that same half inch seam. And as long as you do your seams on both baskets, everything fits together nice. Okay, so we've got our sewing all done. We've got both of those corners done. We're gonna go ahead and bring our basket back in. We're gonna do a little clipping here. And then what I'm going to do is we are going to turn one of these right side out and we're gonna slip them inside of each other, okay? So what we wanna do now is I am going to have my inside, or excuse me, this is gonna be my outside, right? It really doesn't matter which way you do this, but this is my um, outside. This is gonna be my inside. So I'm going to turn it right sides out, okay? Because we're gonna put it inside of each other and then we're gonna sew them together, okay? Get that all nice and boxed, okay? And we are going to slide that right inside of the other one. Okay, you want to make sure you get your corners down in there good. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to match up those side seams. Okay, and we're going to clip. And then we're going to clip this other side seam. Okay, and then what we're going to do, you guys, is we need to leave an opening. Okay, I'm going to play with mine just a little bit to get it in there nice and good. One side I'm gonna clip, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and clip on this side. It doesn't matter which side you do, but we're gonna leave a three inch opening so we can pull this through, okay? Now this is where it was really important that our seams are the same, you guys, okay? Because if our seams are all the same, your bag goes together really nice, okay? So let's grab our tape measure and I'm gonna grab my pen again. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna mark three inches, okay? That way I'll know where to start and stop with my seam, okay? So I'm gonna mark three inches there, one inch there, there we go. So I've got three inches on this side that I'm gonna leave open. I'm still gonna clip it so I know that these are together real well, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this back to the sewing machine and we are gonna sew around, starting at our one mark, we're gonna go all the way around and we're gonna go there, okay? Want to make sure that you've got 
both together. I see that I didn't have both my sides clipped together, so really important that I get that all done. Okay, making sure everything's pulled together, my seams all look good, everything looks good. Okay, so I'm going to take that over the sewing machine and we're going to sew that. I'm going to show you a trick on, I like to lay mine down and sew it from the inside. Okay, so we'll hop over the sewing machine. Okay, so I hope you guys can see this angle okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at one of my marks and I'm going to sew on the inside, measure it from the inside, okay? And in this case, I am going to do a 5 8 inch seam, okay? So I'm going to start and I'm going to make sure I reinforce it good, you guys, because we're going to be pulling on this a little bit to get the other side pulled back out, okay? So make sure you remove your clips as you go. Okay, so we've got our seam all the way around. We'll clip those edges now. This is a really important part, you guys. Before we pull this through, this opening that we have right here, we want to make sure our seams are pressed. So we're gonna use the same trick that we did before. It's a little bit trickier, you guys, because your space is a lot smaller, but we really wanna get these seams pressed open, okay? So just take your time, use the same trick that we did before is pulling one side out and giving it a good press, okay? And especially where you've got that opening because we want, we're gonna close that up with a top stitch. Let me come back to that one. We're gonna close that up with a top stitch. But again, do not skip this pressing, you guys. It's so important. It'll make your life so much easier when you go to do the last step, okay? Make sure you turn it over and we're going to do the other side also, okay? Yeah, Lisa's got it backwards here. Okay. Okay, so we've got that all pressed and I, I want to press that, that piece also open. Okay, so I'm going to come up here. It's a little bit more awkward doing the back side, you guys. Because you gotta pull it from the front. Let's see if I can show you guys that a little bit easier. But you really wanna hit that, hit that seam, okay? And then once you get that pressed all the way around, what we're gonna do is where our opening is, okay? We're gonna pull our fabric so both of our pieces of our basket are right sides out, okay? So our opening was really important, okay? Now, you can also at this point in time give that top area a good press, okay? It'll help when we have to roll everything down. And you'll understand what I mean in just a second. Okay, so now my sunflowers are gonna be my outside. So I'm gonna stuff the other one inside of it, okay? And I really wanna work to get my corners lined up, okay? It really helps your basket. So you just gotta play with it a little bit. Make sure your corners are all out, okay? And I like to take a wonder clip and clip that area that we've got right here, okay? Because that's one I need to make sure I pay close attention to. And then what I do, you guys, is I roll with my fingers, okay? Because you want to make sure your seams are, see how I've got that where it is 
right there that they, they basically just meet there at the top. And it makes it so much easier and it's such a nice um, crisp um, finish if you do that, okay? So I've got that all the way around, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine, okay? And we are going to top stitch. Now I'm gonna do a double top stitch, okay? I'm gonna do a eighth inch seam and a quarter inch seam all the way around. This is where if you want to do a decorative um, thread, you sure could. I'm just staying with cream on mine, but I'm gonna sew it all the way around. And then we're going to turn down this top and we're gonna have a basket all done. Okay, you guys, I am starting with the eighth inch seam first. So I'm just gonna do that all the way around. Remove my clips as I go. Okay, you guys, I've got my seam all the way around. Okay, and the last thing I have to do is clip a little few threads here. So I get those clipped, put those in my little basket over here. And guess what, you guys? I'm going to roll down. Now you don't need to roll down if you guys didn't want to, but I just think the roll down gives it a really cute look to the basket. Okay, so you guys can decide if you wanna roll yours down or if you wanna leave it up. But I'm gonna show you a close up of my little basket all done up on my shelf. So um, I'm gonna put a plant in this one. And then of course, this little guy, you guys saw me use it. I'm using it for all my little threads. So I'll give you a close up. And here's a close up view of that cute little basket that we just made. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on making fabric baskets. And as you can see, there's multiple uses for them. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for more DIY type projects, make sure you check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com.